everyone. How's it going? Hope you guys are having a great day. All right, right from the start, I'm going to say I've been really looking forward to listening to this one. This song is going to kind of bring me full circle from when I first started reacting to videos. The first song that I reacted to when I started this channel was David Gilmore singing Wish You Were Here. It was amazing. I just really liked that version that we listened to. I mean, now that I said that, I'm going to have to listen to it again. Now, this is a new release from a solo album of David Gilmore, who, if you don't know, was the second lead singer of Pink Floyd after Sid Barrett had left the band. For me, personally, I always enjoyed both David Gilmore and Roger Waters, who really wasn't a lead singer in the sense of like Sid and David. But he did take on a significant, uh, he did take on significant vocal duties and was a major songwriter and conceptual leader of Pink Floyd. David, I think of all the songs he did, Comfortably Numb has to be my favorite. And when you look at Roger Waters, who I also just really admire, his my favorite of his would have to be Another Brick in the Wall. Both of those songs are just classic Pink Floyd songs. So I'm looking forward to this. The name of the song is Dark and Velvet Nights. So why don't we stop talking about it and just check this thing out, okay? Here we go. Interesting. <laughs> there he is. sweet and this is the whole overall sound of this is just so david gilmore it just really fits him perfectly i really enjoyed that dramatic start of the video right from the start it kind of pulled you right in it's like what's going on here with that that video is very interesting i always wanted to i always in the least in the past i've always wanted to describe david's voice as breathy I don't know why, but it really isn't. Listening to him, it really isn't breathy at all. I think it's more just this incredibly, incredibly smooth delivery that he has that almost makes you think, like, this has got to be breathy because it's so incredibly smooth. 
Um, and is there any more of an identifiable voice than David Gilmore? As soon as he starts singing, you know, Pink Floyd, David Gilmore, that's him. <laughs> it's his tone and I think timbre and his vocal style and even his phrasing and articulation that really just makes his voice stand out amongst everyone else. He sounds amazingly good here and he's got to be pushing 80s if not in his 80s already but he's got to be right around that 80 mark and for him to sound that good is really amazing as far as the song goes like i said i think it's a perfect tempo and suits his vocal range and vocal style and vocal delivery just perfect um really really enjoying this we'll play this to the end and then we'll talk more here we go <laughs> This dark and velvet night that surrounds us This dark and velvet night I will wrap around us It's all of the words that were spoken In the towers of great cities You know, listening to that, I just wanted to settle in like he did with Pink Floyd. I just kind of wanted to settle in to the uh, guitar solo, like in Comfortably Numb. And I was all set for that to happen. Then it ended. It's like, that's not fair. Um, you know, watching this, I really enjoyed watching that behind the scenes stuff. It really kind of puts you right in the middle of making the song. And some of it was kind of funny, like with the drums, the way they were emphasizing them and stuff. And it just really fun to watch and it's a side of videos that you don't always get to see he threw in some um wonderful rhythm and tempo changes in the song which kind of mixed it up just enough to really keep the song interesting and he's definitely experimenting with some new sounds here i don't remember hearing a lot of the orchestra stuff or at least not as strong as it was here and uh, those symphonic elements just really to me just really it, it separated a little bit, so it wasn't like he was trying to recreate Pink Floyd. He was just being David Gilmour, which I really liked. All in all, this was everything that I was hoping it would be. And let me get my headphones off, and I'm going to be back for final thoughts. Hold on. Be right back. Okay, welcome back for final thoughts. Do you guys have one of these things? I do these videos in a basement, and once in a while some flies will get in here. I think they come up through the sump pump or something. This thing is awesome. It's just a, uh, it looks like a little racquetball or tennis racket or something. And it's electrified. You press a little button on here. And then when you swat at them, and it just electrifies them and it sparks and it's awesome. So there's this fly that's been bugging me and I got it. And I just love this thing. It's awesome. Uh, if you get a chance, this one's made by Black & Decker. And I'm not even promoting it. <laughs> this is just me talking about what I'm doing down in the basement. But these things are great. So if you have issues with any type of mosquitoes, bugs, flies, anything, this thing works great. Anyways, <laughs> that's enough of that. It's hard not to listen to this song and not mentally compare it to Pink Floyd. You're going to do that. I, I need, 
when you hear David Gilmore's voice, that's where it's going to take you. I guess you could classify it if you really wanted to classify it as maybe like a modern version of Pink Floyd, but definitely not Pink Floyd. It's just not as, I always classified Pink Floyd as dreamy. So to me, it just wasn't as dreamy as like a Pink Floyd song. But I will say, it's nice to hear him sing something new. I think he just did a really amazing job. And it's nice that he's not playing off that Pink Floyd fame. It's clear that he's putting a lot of effort, like a legit effort, into putting out a new quality song and somewhat of a different sound. It's funny because he really doesn't have to be doing this. He's proven himself time after time. And yet here he is, probably for the love of music, putting out some more music at an age, like I said, I didn't look. I probably should have looked. He's got to be pushing 80. So uh, good for him. Now, I like the song, but honestly, I'd like to hear the entire album before I gave a final or ultimate thought on this. And there's a reason for that. I call it the Abbey Road test. <laughs> when you listen to side two of Abbey Road, any one of those songs on that side are okay, but you string them all together and it's magic. Um, because of that, I would like to hear more than just this track. I'm wondering that if you hear like a side, or they don't really have sides unless you got the vinyl, but to hear a bunch of this album in its entirety, that maybe you'll get a different feel for it. It's just, and I, that's kind of what I'm thinking that a David Gilmore song or a David Gilmore creation might make you do. Um, I don't know, just my thoughts. I like to hear the whole album before I really gave a firm opinion on what I think of the song. It had a, an overall chill feel that I think that a lot of David Gilmore songs do, so that was nice. And I loved how he played with a little bit of feedback. You don't always hear that. And even that, I think it was a sly guitar. It's a small thing. I don't know if I've ever seen that exact thing before. If I'm going to call it a sly guitar. Please correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm just not sure. But anyway, all those elements just really added to the overall feel of the song. And how about that guitar solo? When I heard that comfortably numb, instantly flashed into my mind. But the thing was too darn short. Why did he do that? Um, ah, he's got that emotional depth to his playing that just really sets him apart from other guitar players. And I just want to hear it. I just want to sit back and listen to it. Uh, regarding the lyrics, there's a lot of um, wow, really strong emotional symbolism here. And he's and don't quote me on how some of these verses went, but he says something about who's going to die first. And he's talking about promises that he can't keep. I'm thinking maybe he was talking about like marriage vows or something. Who's going to die first he, in the promise of marriage that maybe he can't keep if he dies? I don't know. I'm just, I'm guessing after one listen. And the whole thing about holding hands, who's going to, are you going to hold mine or am I going to be left holding yours or something along that? That was just really eerie and kind of sad, um, but really makes you think. And it was just really um, interesting to hear that. Overall, this was both lyrically and musically powerful i just really liked it and it had that chill factor enough to where if i was sitting on the middle of nowhere with a campfire doing whatever you do around a campfire and i won't say any more than that and just um having the song just kind of playing in the background it would be awesome but that guitar solo has got to be longer <laughs> that's all i say anyways maybe you'll put out an extended version of the song at some point you never know so anyways, guys, listen, I hope you enjoyed that. I really did. It was really nice to hear it. And I'm going to have to research if he's got some other new music out. So remember, if you like this, please give me a thumbs up. And if you would like and subscribe my channel, that'd be even better. So remember, only life is priceless. Please make each and every day count. God bless all of you. Peace out. I will talk to you next time. Bye-bye.